Hey girls, it's Wednesday and wait, wait what? Amanda's actually doing a video? Yeah, I know. It's exciting. Um, I'm at play practice right now. I'm supposed to be learning my lines, but I'm getting a little burned out. So I decided I'm going to do a video. Hope nobody walks in. And I also wonder if they can hear me. That would be a little awkward. Um, Janet, I just watched your most recent video and you're talking about Supernatural. I don't think you understand how much I love Supernatural. Um, also, yeah, I'm very excited because it comes back next week and this episode is going to be pretty awesome. I don't know if you've heard anything about it, so I won't mention anything, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. And you, that's, that's season six, and I think you just started a couple weeks ago. Did you really watch it all that fast? Because, I mean, I watched, last year I watched seasons one to four and like, a couple months, but it's pretty fast. Um, I'm not gonna go on much longer about Supernatural, because I could go on all day. I also have a finished prompt here, so I'm going to read that for you. But first, I'm gonna talk a bit more, because I like to talk, and it's been a while. Um, I deserve actual punishments, I think, because I've kept you guys waiting for a really long time, and I feel really bad, but there have been some things going on, like I had a couple school trips, and I've been out of town lots, and a couple times I was just lazy, so maybe two, two or three punishment challenges, which will be fine, and probably make up for it, hopefully. Um, also, we're under a lot of emotional stress because we're doing Romeo and Juliet as a school play, and Romeo has had a lot of personal stuff going on, and he has stepped down. So our new Romeo has a month to learn all of his lines, and I've had some rule shuffling, so now I have a, a month to learn all of my lines. And it's a little down to the wire, but I think we can pull it off, and I think it's going to be really awesome, and I'm excited. Um, also, Jesse, that sock puppet thing you gave me was really hilarious, and I have a couple scenes picked out that I want to do. I've narrowed it down to a couple scenes, so I am going to get right on that with planning and the making of the sock puppets because that is really, really enjoyable. Um, I, don't, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, so I am going to read to you now. Okay, so now I have to employ the use of some movie magic because when I was at the school I got interrupted and... I didn't have enough time to do it after, so I'm doing it now. <clears throat> also, I'm recording this on my iPod. I don't know how the lighting's gonna work out, but hopefully it'll be a little better. So my camera, I think, has finally kicked the bucket, and I'm a little sad about that. But anyway, without further ado, here is the prompt. The thing about Lennon was he loved pranking people. Sure, he was fun to be around. But being his friend was a hazardous job sometimes. If he didn't keep track of him, Lennon would go a little crazy. Revenge could come from anywhere. Take the latest group of jocks that have fallen prey to one of Lennon's schemes, for example. I don't understand why we all can't just get along, I said. It's a teenager thing, I think. We both looked over at the group across the lunchroom. They were glaring at us. I didn't know why they were so mad at us, but I figured Lennon had pulled something major. Or, you know, your tendency to pick on people who are bigger than you. Lennon gestured with his sandwich, faking offense. What do you take me for? I would never pick on anybody, regardless of size. I raised an eyebrow and Lennon took a bite of his sandwich. Glanced over at the group again. They're the kind of guys Lennon usually picked on, jocks with more muscles than sense. Well, it was funny to watch them flounder. They also have more than enough capacity for revenge. One of the jocks stood up and started walking towards us. I elbowed Lennon in the side, and he coughed. Lennon slowly stood, putting the sandwich on the table. Well, it's been nice chatting with you, he said quickly. Lennon backed away from the table and took off. Jock started running after him. Lennon skidded to a stop as two more cut him off. He turned around, desperately seeking an escape route. I sighed and picked up my wrap, knowing I should probably intervene. I knew none of the guys would hit a girl. I might just get us tossed in the dumpster but it was pr probably better than watching my friend get a beating. 
strolled over to the group, recognizing the guys that had cornered Lennon. The leader was Paul Bender, six foot seven Neanderthal. He had nursed a grudge against Lennon ever since Len had filled his locker with ping pong balls back in our freshman year. I personally didn't understand why I couldn't take a joke. Well, what's going on here? I asked. I tried to stay casual. Lennon and I had a theory that jocks could smell fear, and then they'd act on it. I'll tell you what's going on, Paul growled. I'm going to kick this hobbit's ass into the middle of Nernia. Middle Earth, Lennon corrected quickly. A shot of glare at him. Cases like these, it was better if he just kept his mouth shut. What? Unfortunately, Lennon rarely listened to me. He had something to say, and he was going to say it. Hobbits live in Middle Earth. That's Lord of the Rings. But you said Narnia, which is Chronicles of Narnia. They're two completely different things, so you really shouldn't be mixing. Paul stepped forwards and grabbed Lennon's collar. He hoisted Lennon up until the toes of his chucks just barely brushed the tiled floor. You're in no position to be arguing, midget. Lennon nodded quickly, his self-preservation instinct overriding his need to be right. Let him go, Paul, I said. Whatever he did isn't worth it. This clown stole my gym shoes and glued them to the roof of the locker room. Stealing's a harsh word, Lennon piped up. I prefer the term appropriate. Besides, who's to say it was even me that took your shoes? Paul let out a warning growl and Lennon wisely shut up. Listen, clown. Chad and Todd saw you go into the locker room carrying a stepladder. Lennon opened his mouth again, and I cursed the fact that he just didn't know when to quit. That was my, uh, evil twin. Yeah, like a doppelganger. Not me at all. Paul drew his free hand back, fingers curling into a fist. Whoa, 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 I said quickly, stepping forwards. We're all friends here, right? Not with him. Right, well, um... Really, it's not worth beating him up for. Who says? Well, will beating the crap out of him get your shoes back? Paul's eyes narrowed. No. So why don't you put him down and we can make a compromise? Paul dropped Lennon, who landed hard on the ground. I want my shoes back by the end of the day, or else... Else what? Lennon asked. His eyes widened and he clapped a hand over his mouth. Paul stepped closer, towering over him. Or else... Lennon nodded meekly, mouth still covered. Let's go, Paul said. He and his buddies left, pushing me out of the way for good measure. Once they were a safe distance away, Lennon stood up. That went rather well, he said cheerly, cheerfully. He slung an arm around my shoulders and we walked back to the table. Please, I replied. You look like you're about to pee your pants. Lennon chuckled and picked up his abandoned sandwich. Have to admit, I didn't see that one coming. Took another bite, chewed for a while. We ate in silence. Lennon quickly finished and clapped his hands. All right, he said. Let's go. Go where? Locker room. Wouldn't want to disappoint Polly now, would we? I laughed and shook my head. Grabbed our garbage, throwing everything away. You mean this is actually a learning experience? Smacked Lennon playfully, and he winced theatrically. We turned down another hallway, and I glanced sideways at Lennon. I could practically see the gears turning in his head. Whatever revenge scheme he was planning would definitely be bad for Paul and his buddies, and I wouldn't miss it for the world.